In this video, we're going to look at the relationship between Gibbs energy and spontaneity. So we've already developed this idea that if we want to know if a process is spontaneous, we look So we know that if we want to know if our process is spontaneous, we look at the entropy change of the universe. So we know if delta S for the universe is greater than zero, we know that we are spontaneous. Or we could write this as delta S of the system plus delta S of everything except for the system, the surroundings. If we add those two pieces together, that's the same as saying the universe. So that has to be greater than zero for a spontaneous process. And it's a little bit inconvenient to constantly be looking at, okay, what's delta test for the system? Now I'm going to calculate it for the surroundings. Let's add those. Is that sum greater than zero? So it'd be nice to develop a function where we could just concentrate on the system. Let's see if we can do that. All right, we'll start by writing delta S of the system, and we'll just leave that alone. And now we're going to look at delta S for the surroundings. Now we know for the surroundings, we can calculate that delta S is Q for the surroundings, how much heat we put into it, over the temperature. So we have this equation. So we still have the one term that's for the system and one that's for the surroundings. And now we can do a little trick. We realize that if heat, if heat is going to be put into the surroundings, it had to come to the system and vice versa. So here we've replaced Q surroundings by Q system by putting in that negative sign. So we still have this has to be greater than or equal to zero for it to be a spontaneous process. So at this point, notice what we've done. We have functions that are all just dealing with the system. So just to recap, the first term is the entropy change of the system. And the second term is the entropy change of the surroundings, just in a little bit of disguise, right? Because we've saying that this is the opposite of the heat that flowed into the surroundings is the heat that of the system. So that's why there's a negative sign. Okay, great. So we have entropy change of system plus entropy change of surroundings is greater than zero. And typically, if we're dealing with system variables rather than surrounding variables, we just omit the subscripts. So if you don't see subscripts on a variable, that means you're talking about the system and not the surroundings. Okay, now we often work at constant pressure. If you think about working in any kind of open vessel like a test tube or a beaker, the pressure that's imposed on the system is just whatever atmospheric pressure happens to be that day, but it doesn't change during the experiment. And if we're at constant pressure, we know that delta H is equal to Q. So we can make that substitution into the equation or the, the inequality. We can say delta S minus delta H over T must be greater than zero for a process to be spontaneous. Now at this point, what we can do is multiply both sides by T. So we'll get T delta S minus delta H is greater than or equal to zero. I'm going to take this over here and just reorder it a little bit. Minus delta H plus T delta S is greater than zero. And now I'm going to divide by negative one. Now when I divide by negative one, you have to remember that if you do this with, with an inequality, if you divide an inequality by negative one, you have to flip the sign. Okay, now this might look familiar if you've had a chemistry course before, because this function we call delta G. And notice that if we define delta G that way, it has to be negative for a spontaneous process. If we're talking about something that occurs at constant pressure, and sometimes we'll put a little P there to remind ourselves. Uh, notice that we were also not talking about changing the temperature, so we can put a, a P there as well if we want. Very, very often when we run a reaction at a constant pressure and temperature, and we do, if we want to know if it's spontaneous, 
we just look at delta G. So if delta G is negative, we say the process is going to be spontaneous. So, uh, delta G for the system being negative for a process is the same as saying delta S for the universe is positive. Okay, so positive delta S for the universe means the process is spontaneous, or we can say negative delta G for just the system also means the process is spontaneous. Those are mathematically equivalent as we've just shown.